Hi everyone, JJ here. I just wanted to do a final fourth part to the altered, um, well that would be altering a book, part four. This is the final, so I wanted to show you the final um, cover for it as well as what I did to the inside completely. I know that I had some camera problems along the way and there was portions of it that I couldn't film so um, I just wanted to go over that and, and um, show you the, the things that I did to it and then if you have any questions please feel free to give you know to comment or whatnot. I try to answer the questions as quickly as I possibly can but um, I, first off before I go over the book I wanted to thank Debbie Ann Parent with Ephemera's Vintage Garden. This was a design team project, my th uh, third and final design team project um, for a guest designer for the uh, summer months. And so I really enjoyed doing it and I really enjoyed working with her digital papers. And I hope you guys found some really great um, videos and projects and were able to see some of her papers and um, I encourage everyone to go over to her website and her store and check out all her digital art. She comes out with new projects or new digital papers ever so often. I'm not sure how, how she plans that out, but um, you can actually subscribe to her blog and then she gives notifications when things come out also to her Facebook page. And then also she has um, freebies that if you subscribe on her blog to uh, freebies um, it's either um, every week every other week it's ever so often that she gives freebies it's just a digital sheet that she's designed um, for everybody as a thank you and it's so wonderful because um, there's times that I know everybody doesn't have money to spend on um, papers but you're able to get you know something new that you can work with and you probably already have paper that you print out in your printer <laughs> and you use in your printer so that then you'd have a new sheet to work with and you could make a card or um, whatnot to give as a gift to brighten somebody's day so um, I know that she brightens my day with all her new products projects that she comes out with as long uh, as well as her videos and everything and things that she does so I just wanted to give a huge thank you and um, to her for allowing me to work with her her papers so um, okay so I started out doing the cover um, it's a book an altered book this book is very large actually compared to most of them that I work with um, this one measures over nine inches it's like nine and a quarter nine and three-eighths by six and three-eighths so it's quite large so it fits a full eight and a half by eleven sheet of paper folded in half so it's really cool when you're working with it um, it gives you enough space out to the side even to add tabs if you want to add tabs to it um, for any sections or anything you want to do on the inside. Usually uh, my books are smaller than that that I work with so this one was really nice because I was able to use the full sheet of the digital paper. So um, there's tutorials, there's a, a part one, a part two, and a part three that are actually um, tutorials. Um, it was the first time that I did like a full tutorial and it um, it's interesting. I, I don't know how often I'll do that, but um, it was interesting. It was fun. Um, I think my most challenging thing was actually setting up the camera, so on that part of it. But um, but I just wanted to show the final work that I did because I did do some of this off camera. So um, with the flowers and whatnot, the butterflies, adding the butterflies, and then a little piece of a doily here up here and over on the side but um, all the paper that I use is from Ephemera's Vintage Garden so and this is going to be my supplies book um, it says supplies here and what I'm going to do is make a list that I have sections on the inside and I'll show that in a minute um, where I'm going to list all of my supplies so when I go to order supplies I don't order duplicates because I've done that before so that's not fun so I just wanted to show the cover of the book um, this I didn't talk about very much um, this was done with Martha Stewart gold paint 
it was a black, this is the original book cover, it was black and so I just dry brushed here and then to cover up the words or the title of the original book, I just really heavily, I think I put like three or four coats of the Martha Stewart paint along the spine, so, um, and then the back of the book. And this was something that I did off camera. It was just a piece of this paper. It's one of the digital papers um, that I had torn out and I just pieced it on here um, in that area so that it gave it a little bit more interest to the back cover. And I think what I'm going to do is do some still shots of it and do a few still shots at the end of the book. Hopefully it'll give you a more close up because my camera doesn't pick up very much. Um, as much detail as some other cameras that I've seen so and then um, so okay let's get on with the inside of the book now when I started doing the cover I decided that I wanted to put make it really 3d here like really flowery and <laughs> whatnot because I really like that the problem with that though when you open the book see it doesn't open up flat so um, what I decided to do on the inside when I did my book block I did it um, with I thought it was going to be and I followed a, a um, like an instructional video on YouTube, but it turned out to be Coptic Stitch. I've done a number of Coptic Stitch, and when I was doing it, I was thinking, this is Coptic Stitch. This is not actual stitching it for a flat book and whatnot, but it actually worked out well because then I'm able to, I did pockets here, so I could slip the book into the pocket. Then I can remove the book, set this off to the side, and then be able to write in my book um, with it. So it, it made it to where I could um, actually use it and it would be more functional for what I want um, to do when I'm writing in it because um, the pockets, any type of pockets, any type of three-dimensional flowers, anything like that will actually, it usually hinders me from writing in the book. So um, that actually makes it more functional for me. Now if you want to do it to where you actually take the book block and put it into the book and glue it into the book, that's doable too. Um, there's a number of videos online that show how to do that and whatnot. And then also in the video I went through um, it was the third one. I went through how I did these with my um, envelope punch board and made um, the tags for my dividers um, with it and then I just glued it to the divider. Each divider I'm going to put a list of the um, like what's in it. I'll write on there with a black, probably black marker and then I'll go through and list the supplies that I have in that category. So, and then as it grows, I can just continue either adding categories um, to it if I haven't used it, or I could also, if this becomes where I have more supplies in these categories, I hope not because <laughs> there's 12 of them. So, I should be able to get all my supplies in here. I shouldn't have more supplies than that. If I do, I probably need to purge. But, <laughs> um,. If it does come down to that, then I can always, you know, take this out and make another book cover and put the current one in here or make another book cover for another one, you know, type thing. So it, it's it's functional and versatile. versatile. So, and I just um, glued them on. And then on the back of it, I think I showed that where I put the ink on the back of it. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the, well, maybe I will go through the whole thing because I don't think I... I don't even know if I showed the papers. So, and all I did was the lines on the paper is just done with my computer. And then these are stamps that I had that I stamped on it. Now, I will say that I stamped on it and then I photocopied it. That, if you're doing it for yourself and yourself only, that's the only time I recommend doing that. I just didn't want to go through and stamp every single page. When I'm giving it to somebody or when I am actually putting a book together, um, if I was going to put a book together and use a computer printed lined paper, I would hand stamp each one of them because stamp companies, they usually have a policy. Some of them have angel policies. Make sure you check with those companies and make sure you ch check the copyrights on them because you won't be able to photocopy them and then sell your work. So just FYI on that. But 
Um, so, um, I have also seen um, on Debbie Ann Parents um, Ephemera's Vintage Garden, her YouTube channel, she has a number of videos of how to put together um, books from her journal kits. And so hers are very um, educational and helpful. When you purchase a journal kit, you have a video right there with it where you can actually you know, do it in the same way that she does it. Or if you have another way that you want to do it, you can of course do it that way. You can use her papers in a number of ways like I've showed over the past videos that I've done. And the videos that she does, she shows you how to do it. She has a lot of um, design team members too. If you subscribe to her YouTube channel and to her Facebook page, um, she actually shares those videos with um, everybody and then you're able to see what um, other people do um, with her papers too. And it's, it's very cool. She has some very 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 cool designers that I love watching their videos so okay now the last paper is what I did I think I showed this where I glued the two papers together um, this was one of her freebies um, and then this I believe is one of her freebies now what I did with this one was I took um, she had a, a postcard design that I blew made bigger um, to fit the whole page on my printer setting I just the whole page so um, that's what I did with that but as you're doing the Coptic stitch um, Coptic stitch ha shows the binding on it and um, you can either cover it um, when you cover it though you have to remember too that see how it bends to make the book lay flat so whatever's in here has to either be bendable and has to bend up into the the binding because see there's it bends like that so wherever you are in the book it's gonna bend so it has to be flexed because um, I didn't want to do anything around the spine really but I wanted it to blend in with the book so I took the Martha Stewart gold paint um, first of all I clamped it down and I took the my glue the what did I use collage potch and I painted it with glue. I did two coats of glue over um, the spine of the book with it clamped down so that it was together. If you leave it apart, the glue will seep into your pages too far. Um, it still seeps into your pages some, but it's not as far. So you have to you have to clamp it down. And I just took two um, of the, um, I guess you'd call them binder clips. Um, I used to call them bull clips. Um, but I just clamped it down and then just painted the glue over the spine. Then I went back after it was completely dry and I just painted it with the Martha Stewart gold paint and I did two coats of the Martha Stewart gold paint over the spine. And so even though on camera it doesn't, I guess it shows gold a little bit, but um, it's really gold as I'm looking at it. But um, you could put ink on it. You could do, you know, a number of things. They want you to blend it with your project. I just thought the gold would go really well with it and then I showed how I did the pocket in the tutorial and so that's my book block and then the book block just fits into my book and I can change it out now in the future if I want to change it out and I don't want this to be supplies I want it to be something else fortunately I title it as supplies but um, if I want to do something else I can now the other thing that I did too was this is just notebook paper and then a piece of white cardstock. And then I just used a little bull clip up here at the top. And I didn't clip it to both of them because I wanted to leave, whoops, sorry, I didn't clip it to both of them because I wanted to leave this open. So this can slide right into this side. And then as I'm going through my supply list, or I'm using up my supplies and I decide for the next month or my next order that I need to order something I can just go ahead and write it in here as the supplies I need or the supplies that I want so if there's a new product that came out that I want I'll just write it over here and then um, when I'm ready to place my order I can just go through and say okay this is what I need and this is what I want to fill out my orders and then if I see something that's on sale or see something that I want that I can look through here and find 
you know, if I have it or not. Now, I do a lot of my ordering online. In fact, most of my ordering is on, and most of my supply purchases are online because I don't go to the store um, the, for crafting supplies. So, um, the only thing that I usually pick up it would be like at Walmart, something that they carry over at Walmart. Um, and then I have um, it's just easier it for me when I go online and I find something on sale, then I can go to this and I can say, well, I already have that product. Um, whether it be an ink that I've forgotten about or um, it's usually a die or <laughs> a stamp set or um, an embossing folder that I usually duplicate. So, um, but it also helps me too if I go through and say, okay, um, if there was a, I have a lot of stamping up stamps too and so if there's a lot of Stampin' Up! Um, stamps that are on like when um, you see those um, sales where people are getting rid of their stuff um, and stuff then I can then I can actually go in and say oh well I already have that one I don't have to worry about it so so anyway I, I think everybody <laughs> got the concept of that so but I just wanted to um, do a final video and kind of show the book block and what I did with it and then also show the completed version of this now um, I did push this to the top so this would fit above the book and slide it down so that's a nice thing too that you can slide this up and down um, with that too but it doesn't um, close because I didn't um, design the book block with the extra pad in there but that's okay um, it actually works and I don't mind it staying open if you if you do mind that then of course you can put a closure on it but the more you press this down the more it could split your spine too so um, and everything so I'm just leaving it up like that so that it doesn't um, split the spine but I can also remove this too um, and just have it sitting you know like underneath the book or um, on top of it that I want so but anyway I hope everybody enjoyed this um, tutorial and this series that I did and I hope I will be able to do one in the future um, for a book and I've really enjoyed doing this and I hope to see everybody soon I hope everybody's having a great day and a blessed week Bye, everyone.